Well, I've decided to change things up a bit from doing series. And instead, I'm just going to talk about vague movies for a while here until I can think of something better to do. And the first one I decided to do was Yonguri, Monster of the Deep. The first non-Godzilla giant monster movie I ever saw. And it's not that good. Like, it does have some moments, which I will show, of course. But it has this kind of overall air of cheapness to it, which is really hard to get past. That and the fact that there is no original language dub is kind of damaging to the film overall. But we'll talk about that towards the end of the review. Main thing right now to just get over basic plot, because I don't actually have footage from the very beginning of the movie on hand. Essentially, it starts off with a couple getting married, and then we meet one of our, sadly, main characters, as those two quickly kind of disappear into the film, and that's when things start getting weird. You see, as the couple drive away from the wedding, a weird beam is shot into their car, and then we find out that this beam is being shot at them by a kid named Icho. And he's an annoying little brat you just want to die for most of the movie. And he doesn't, sadly, because they don't really kill kids in monster movies. Instead, he gets away with it pretty much fine under the excuse it was a prank, even though later the, the scientist who made this device, Elo, tells him that it was experimental and could have been harmful. So he could have potentially killed his sister and, and her uh, new husband just because he was pulling a prank on them. And we get to deal with him for most of the movie, and that's part of the issue of this film. However, we can't quite dwell on that at this moment, so on we go. On to the kind of plot of the movie that they introduce and they don't really bring up again. Is the fact that the husband of whatever her name is, is an astronaut. He's never named, and even though she is, I really can't be bothered to remember her name off the top of my head right now. Of course, on their honeymoon night, he gets called immediately into space because they're, do they're apparently doing nuclear testing somewhere in the Middle East. Which, although it is important to the rest of the movie, the fact he's an astronaut really doesn't come into play after this. There are some nice miniature sets involved with this, except the space sets are, um, well, cheap. Now, as a result from the nuclear testing, it caused an earthquake, just slowly heading towards the center of Korea. South Korea. It's obviously not set in North Korea. And of course, and everyone's giving an evacuation notice. The country's panicking. They want to get the military involved. Cause they don't really get earthquakes there normally, I guess. I don't know. We apparently get them in Alberta, and I didn't know we did. And anyways, they quickly reveal that the earthquakes are reminding what the general, who we've never named, like no one ever gets a name in this movie, it seems. Is reminded of a, fa a fairy tale his mother told him when he was little about the monster Yonguri. And of course, when they find out that there's something causing the earthquake, they instantly name it Yonguri and just kind of stick with the fact it's obviously the fairy tale come true. And although I like the concept a little bit of it being a burrowing animal, Yonguri ne neither looks like a creature that could exist underground for any length of time, because he can't really dig. And they kind of jump to conclusions pretty quick on his history. And of course then there's a wonderful scene which doesn't make any sense, which I'm just going to show you right now, because it's one of the things that makes this movie so strange. Now, as you can tell, their that scene was just a little bit strange. They're driving perfectly fine, all of a sudden they're flying down a cliff, and their tires are still squealing even though they're not on pavement. And that's really where the ish big issue in this movie for me comes in, is the, the fact that it really doesn't feel like they tried that hard for a lot of the scenes. They had a really good idea, and instead of trying to make it look convincing, they just want to get it done and out of the way. And it all just feels really rushed. There's no atmospheric building in the movie. And even if the miniature sets are pretty darn good, they really don't stand up compared to how bad some of the other special effects are. A lot of the really bad ones are towards the end. I think it might be something to do with just low budget, maybe, or them using up everything in other scenes, but it really impacts the film. Of course, another big issue is the dubbing. It's not the worst I've heard by far, but it does 
kind of missed details, it feels like. And it's kind of like the atomic test scene. You see an explosion, and you see, like, the crack, and you're kind of... I guess they assume you'll put two and two together that it woke up the monster. But if you didn't notice that, or weren't paying attention, it would just seem completely random. Although the stuff that has to do with one of them being astronaut is, because that never gets brought up again. It's a weird issue, and if the South Korean version of this movie still exists, I'm sure that it might have been a little bit better, because you can tell just by watching when the actors are talking that there was a lot more emotion than there ends up being through the dubbing. But it's unfortunately lost, and all that remains is of like a 48 minute long clip. It's in really rough shape of the original language print. So there's really not much to go off here. And I really don't see them dubbing it over in Korean, because that would just be weird. Now, as this is a giant monster movie, the giant monster has to appear. And he eventually does. Now, the movie does manage to have a tiny bit of suspense leading up to this, because you do wonder what he's going to look like when you get that one glimpse. And when you do see Yongri, well, he doesn't look that bad, all things considered. The suit is nicely detailed. It looks pretty good from the back. The head has a nice design, and even if the proportions are funny, it's okay. But it borrows way too much from other movies. With other monsters that they did, like uh, and one from the same year here, uh, Space Monster Wang Magui, although he was essentially just a, an outer space version of King Kong, he did look pretty creative. And Yongri has a bit of creativity, but he has the same tusks as Gamera. He breathes fire and eats fire like Gamera. He has a horn beam attack, which looks strikingly similar to Gaios's attack. I'm trying to think if Gamera vs. Gaios came out around that time, and I think it did. He has back spines like Godzilla. He tunnels underground like Baragon and has, has the nose horn. And he actually uses, in some prints of the movie I've seen, a very similar sound effect to Barugan from the Gamera series. Like, the suit itself, it isn't even that bad looking, so I don't know why they didn't try to make it a bit more original. Considering that the color scheme's nice, and he does look, oh, he could potentially be a tunneling animal if they would have, like, made it look like he could actually dig without his head getting in the way. But as it is, the suit, it looks nice, but it's flawed, and it's not that creative. But at least it's nice to see a giant monster finally pop up in a giant monster movie. Now, as we all expect in the movie of this genre, he goes on a rampage in the city. And these scenes actually aren't that poorly done. The miniature sets look pretty good, a lot of the special effects do work, and although the famous scene where you can see the fire pipe in his mouth is included in this little segment, well, not what I'm showing you, I actually kind of forgot to record that, it's pretty fine. Like, my only complaint is the killer bricks roaming the city, because one literally flies at someone from an angle and whacks them in the chest. Which is weird. Now, the monster scenes in this movie, for what it's worth, really aren't that bad. You don't see wires at all in this movie. Like, even in the space scenes, like, yeah, sure, the space backdrop is obviously just a backdrop. It doesn't look like space. But at the same time, you don't see wires. In the original Rodan, the only Rodan, you saw wires. In Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, that's from the 90s, you could see wires. Even in um, some of the Gamera movies, especially Gamera vs. Gaios, you can see them in pretty much every scene. It makes the movies look really cheap. Even if everything else in this movie looks cheap, they manage to cover up wires, and that is something I'm quite nice. I quite enjoy about it, because that does give it... It looks like they did try in some scenes, at the very least. They just gave up in others. Which is pretty unfortunate, considering this movie had a decent concept. Of course, after the monster goes on its main rampage in the city, it decides to head out to get something to eat. Because it apparently lives off fuel and oil and fire, which again I forgot to record, although it's the exact same special effect used in the Gamera movies. They just show the monster breathing fire in reverse. There's also kind of an... Like, they show the monster, like, reacting in some scenes with the people. But if you actually cut that out, it would be one long... You could get, like, one long take. 
of that scene, which would actually look pretty cool, and I wish they would have left that intact. Now, I don't really have much to say about the scenes that follow this, like the big attack on the city. We find out the monster is weak to ammonia powder. Each show runs around in the sewers and follows the monster, which is more fun to imagine than it is to watch, although he is smeared in brown stuff most of the time. And the movie just kind of continues on its merry way towards the end. Which I don't mind much. Like, the main characters kind of fall back compared to the monster. Like, the the government and the military have quite a few scenes, even though we don't know who any of them are. And I don't really like the people they're portraying there, because they're all pretty basic and they're not too complex. But it gets the job done for what it's worth. Now, the government does try to take out Yangri using missiles, and they're convinced they work, even though um, Yilu magically has a helicopter and, you know, hovers overhead and sprinkles ammonia, the ammonia powder on him, which makes the monster fall over, and they're convinced the missiles did it. And, of course, Icho, being an idiot, goes and sneaks up to see the monster, and that's when it starts getting even stranger. It's a small scene, but it kind of leaves an impact. At the very least, the movie's almost over and gives us two of the worst special effects in the whole thing right off the bat, just to let us know. So yeah, the monster dances, and I think that's where this movie really slips up. It starts off like a serious science fiction movie. Well, it tries to be serious, it doesn't really work too well. And then it turns into a monster movie, where the monster's kind of villainous and has an interesting weakness. <coughs> Sorry. And then it decides that obviously the best idea is to have the monster dance. Now, since Gamera was, like, Gamera came out in 1965, and he was the friend of all children. Everyone loves Gamera. Even Godzilla stopped being such a serious threat. And most monsters were starting to become a little bit more child-friendly because they realized that kids were part of the audience. But does it make sense for them to have a scene with the monster dancing? And yet, have seen the pe people covered in blood getting injured because of it. And the ending of the movie, which is probably one of the most disturbing endings to a monster movie I've ever seen. And it doesn't make sense at all either. But we'll get to that in like really shortly, because there's not much left to the movie, trust me on this. Now, after Yongari attacks, wherever that was where he came in with the bad green screen, the special effects do get good again. It does have a scene that reminds me a lot of when uh, Gojira attacks the bridge in the first Godzilla movie, but I don't know, you get some pretty cool effects with them trying to attack the monster with rockets. Although, as you can tell, every time there's an explosion, a little piece of black paper flies off, which I'm pretty sure is a result of the detonation charges. Like, I've seen this in other movies where you can see the charges, but I've never seen the residue of them flying away. And you also get a lovely shot of one hanging onto his face. A little bit in as well, or it didn't fly off. Which would have been so easy to, like, maybe fix, but they were too lazy. 
Like this movie, they should have tried a little bit harder, honestly. Now, of course, the government realizes that the rockets aren't working. Yongri really can't necessarily be stopped with these means, even though they didn't listen at all. I kind of remember seeing, like, I did fast forward to a chunk of the movie here, where they someone brings up how the heat's probably going to give him more energy and they shouldn't be shooting at him, and they ignore it and keep shooting him anyways. But I don't quite remember. However, our main characters come back with more of their ammonia and start sprinkling it all over the monster, which is really effective for one reason or another. I don't know why it's so effective, like it's a neat idea, I like th them using a chemical for this kind of thing, but it does make him rectally bleed to death, which is really disgusting, and I, apparently it was actually cut out a lot when they ran the movie on TV, because it's really not needed. There's, like, he doesn't ingest it or anything, so there's no, no real excuse I could think of for the scene to happen, although it does kill him. It's also quite distressing that they start giggling and laughing right after. Apparently Koreans are soulless, evil people. No offense to anybody, of course, but that's really the vibe this movie gives me. Now, it's really hard to complain too much, though, because this is one of the only South Korean movies, monster movies, you can get in North America. Pulgasari from 1962 has been lost forever. Space Monster Wang Magui will never see a release outside of Korea by the looks of it. Bishungu the Flying Monster, I'm not too sure how to pronounce that one. It's very rare, it's just pirates footage from other movies. Dinosaur Zuzu and Youngster Gugu is available online, but it looks kind of stupid. And there's just a bunch of other ones that they've made, where the really old ones you can't find anymore, so it's only the really crappy ones that seem to show up. And it, although is unfortunate, there's nothing we can do about it, because they didn't start preserving films out there until the 70s. And even so, that doesn't seem like it was too effective. If you want to see a different monster movie, I would say to check this one out. It's probably the only non-Japanese one I can think of that's still from that area. Like, I know they made movies in Thailand, there's Gorgo, there's the American-made ones, but this is probably one of the best. Gorgo's really good, too, and, I don't know, Reptilicus is okay. But this is a very interesting movie, and probably the oldest South Korean monster movie you will ever see. And, well, I'd like to talk about other ones, but that's really hard to do, since I have no way of seeing them or getting footage from them if I did see them. So I guess this will be probably the only review I do like this for the moment. With any luck, I'll be talking about Grizzly within the next month or so. It depends if my coffee of it ever comes into HMV. And, yeah, hopefully everything works out with my next, the next reviews I have planned. I was going to do the Godzilla series, but the copyrights are crazy with those movies, so I decided not to do it for now. And I'll decide my next movie next time I get a chance to do this. So for now, the Maniac is signing out.